welcome back to our channel and thank you so much for joining us on the artistic edge i am terry and malcolm Alain. i am here to share with you some tips and tricks of how we navigate through our journey living on the artistic edge <music> shared with you before five benefits that we got from using the storytelling technique today we'll be sharing five additional benefits of storytelling for children on the spectrum we have seen remarkable improvement with alex from the techniques that we have been using all right let's jump right into it with some more of the benefits that we get from storytelling Building conversation. The fact that a child on the spectrum does not respond to you when you speak doesn't necessarily mean that they don't understand. What we find is from time to time, because he's nonverbal, you find that we may not be inclined to have conversations with him. And you may find that you know that they are not going to respond or they will not respond in the way we want them to respond. Then we are not inclined to have conversation with them. What the storytelling technique does for us is it encourages us to have meaningful conversation. So in telling the story, you, you have interaction, you are asking simple questions or short questions that require one answer or such. So for example, what's the title of the story? The title of the story is The Lost Sheep and the child will respond, The Lost Sheep or you can say The Lost and they will finish the sentence so it helps to build conversation between you and your child another benefit is it improves phonetic language when i say phonetic language it speaks to the sounds of words so um, in teaching the alphabet we may start out using um, the sound of the letters of the alphabet. The A, what sound does the letter make? A sound of words comes under the caption phonics, and that's where we get the term phonetic language. So in engaging in conversation at times, you may stop and re-emphasize how some words are pronounced. So for example, now that Alex is learning a little language, whenever we call him, he will tend to say, yeah, mommy. So yeah, mommy. Now what you find there is the S doesn't come out. From telling a story to your child, you are able to identify words in that story that you want to encourage pronunciation and you can re-emphasize that word in the story by asking them to repeat the word so for example from time to time you will hear in my storytelling where i will ask alexavia to repeat a particular word or when i ask certain questions it will allow him to give that answer or to repeat the answer. So right there, you are improving your phonetic language. It also improves their receptive language. Receptive language shows understanding. That's what it does. Receptive language, it shows understanding. It shows that the instruction given to the child, the child understands. And how do you know that they understand? Of course, by the way they respond. Uh, where is the bed? We sleep on the bed. Where is the bed? Mm, beautiful. All right. Also improves their expressive language. Expressive language is how they express themselves in their wants, their needs and or their emotions expressive language does not necessarily have to be words it doesn't have to include words expressive language can be verbal or non-verbal so sign language is an expressive language um 
pointing is an expressive language because normally children who doesn't have speech or they have limited speech they will tend to point to what they want or if they probably does not understand how to point they will probably cry and crying is an expression because crying is sometimes telling you that something is wrong so that brings your attention to what is it that is wrong so expressive language can be in different ways and last but not least one more of the benefit is improving on motor skills and motor skills can be gross motor skills or fine motor skills and it all depends on what you are trying to bring about in the story so in doing the story or in telling the story sometimes you may have activities from the story some fine motor skills improvement could be drawing writing coloring lacing or whatever activities painting or such that you can garner by using your finer muscles so anything that requires the muscles in your fingers and your hand would be referred to as the fine motor skills if you are working on larger muscles like your whole arm and uh, jumping activities movements and stuff those are gross motor skills you can get improvements in motor skills and that is depending on how you utilize the story how you tell the story what you bring to the story and also the objectives that you want to achieve from the story Just to give a recap of five more of the benefits they are as follows build conversation improves phonetic language improves receptive language improves expressive language and improve on motor skills whether they are fine or gross motor skills once again thank you so much for joining us in this another episode of living on the artistic edge remember now don't forget to like comment share and subscribe. Thank you.